Every person harbors a mischievous little creature that can significantly affect their mental well-being and overall quality of life. In this video, we will delve into the inner workings and thought processes of this little monster from a cognitive psychology perspective. Moreover, it covers effective strategies for managing our emotions, achieving emotional stability, and cultivating a positive mindset. Hello everyone. Welcome to Social Insights. Our channel focuses on social skills, habit formation, storytelling, and dating tips, with new content every Wednesday and Saturday, continuously providing you with valuable social advice and techniques. If this is your first time visiting our channel, please subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any exciting videos. Now, let's get started. Let's start with a little story. Kate is a cheerful girl who works at a busy coffee shop in the city center. As an excellent waitress, she always greets each customer with a smile. However, one day, she suddenly finds herself feeling down and anxious. Kate has always loved her job, so she is very confused about why she is experiencing these negative emotions. She seeks help from her friend, Amy. Amy is an experienced psychologist. To help Kate better understand the importance of emotion management, Amy asks Kate to imagine a scenario, suppose one day you are walking down the street and a friend walks towards you without greeting you. What would you think? How would you feel? They must have seen me, but they deliberately ignored me, Kate answers. That's what you think at this moment, Amy continues. In fact, there could be many answers to this question. Some people may think like you. Others may feel that in just a few days, their friend has forgotten who they are and feel upset. And some people might think, what's she daydreaming about, and not have any negative emotions, even wanting to run up and greet their friend again. Do you see? These are our emotions. The same situation can cause negative emotions in some people, no feelings in others, and relatively positive emotions in others. From the perspective of cognitive psychology, the mechanisms underlying emotions are a set of automated thinking processes. Our thoughts are often rapid and automatic, and sometimes we may not even be aware of our thoughts before experiencing an emotional fluctuation. These rapidly running thoughts are referred to as irrational automatic thinking. These irrational thoughts have three characteristics. 1. Polarization, this refers to our tendency to only consider the negative possibilities of a situation while ignoring the positive ones. For example, when someone doesn't respond to our message, we may immediately assume that they are intentionally ignoring us, disregarding other possible explanations. This kind of polarized thinking easily traps us in negative emotions such as unhappiness, self-blame, anger, and frustration. 2. Overgeneralization, are you familiar with the story of the blind man and the elephant? In the story, each person only experiences a part of the elephant and assumes they have a complete understanding of the animal. In our own lives, when we face obstacles or disappointments, we often jump to conclusions and generalize our experiences. We might believe that specific types of people, positions, or personalities are not compatible with us. Unfortunately, this kind of thinking can often lead to our fears becoming a reality. 3. Catastrophizing, this refers to our tendency to exaggerate a single failure or setback into a severe outcome. This kind of thinking often leads to severe depression and anxiety. We often hear people say, I will never be okay again or it's all over once I fail. This catastrophizing thinking easily impairs our ability to think rationally and find solutions to problems. Many of the troubles we face in life are related to automatic thinking. Specifically, irrational automatic thinking has three negative impacts on us. 1. Life becomes pessimistic, lacking the confidence to try new things. Many people's motivation for doing things is seeking approval and constantly measuring the value of things, and even their worth, based on others' praises. Ultimately, they end up living as someone else's idea of a child, driven purely by utilitarianism. Once others don't recognize them, they completely lose confidence in life and work goals, unwilling to try anything new. 2. The process of achieving goals is filled with trepidation and fear. Behind the efforts of many students lies fear, the fear of disappointing their parents if they don't perform well on exams, even if their parents don't show it outwardly. This type of parenting is no different from the direct criticism and pessimism we mentioned earlier. 
Therefore, education based on seeking approval through automatic thinking only leads to progress driven by fear, which is difficult to sustain. 3. There is no enjoyment in doing things, and once goals are achieved, one falls into confusion or even depression. Many people study singing not because they appreciate the poetic lyrics, beautiful melodies, and inner joy, but because they focus on the money, fame, and benefits that come after overnight success. This is extremely dangerous because once the goal is achieved, one may feel that life has no meaning. At the same time, it's impossible to always be the first, and not everything needs to be ranked or graded. Without performance indicators to support it, things lose their value and joy, and you certainly won't be happy. What do you think of my thoughts? If you found today's show motivating, please consider subscribing to this channel and turning on notifications to stay up to date on future thrilling videos. To seek the answer to this question, we first need to understand the mechanism of thought production, which can be broken down into five steps. A represents an event, which is the external fact that occurs. B represents your perception of the event, which is your belief. C represents the resulting emotion, such as feeling sad or angry. D represents the adjustment process, such as moving from catastrophizing to normalizing. E represents the effect that arises after the adjustment, indicating that you feel somewhat better after adjusting your thoughts. Furthermore, we can simplify this process into a model, identify challenge adjust. By adopting different strategies in different stages, we can actively cope with these irrational thoughts. In the identification stage, we need self-awareness to recognize the automatic thinking behind our emotions. When we realize that we are trapped in negative emotions, we can pause and ask ourselves, what am I thinking? Do I have any irrational thoughts? Through observation and reflection, we can identify irrational automatic beliefs. In the challenging stage, we can examine our thoughts from the perspectives of polarizing, overgeneralizing, and catastrophizing, and search for evidence to challenge these thoughts. We can ask ourselves, are there other possible explanations? Are these thoughts rational? Am I exaggerating the severity of the situation? Through contemplation and evidence-seeking, we can gradually change irrational automatic thinking. In the adjustment stage, we need to cultivate a positive thinking pattern. We can adjust our thinking by seeking positive explanations, focusing on personal growth and progress, and nurturing gratitude and an optimistic mindset. Doing so can help us better face challenges and difficulties while maintaining inner calm and positive emotions. In a word, I want to emphasize that emotional management is a process of learning and practice. Only through continuous reflection and adjustment can we cultivate healthier and more positive thinking patterns, making our lives and work more meaningful. Let us bravely confront our thoughts and embrace life's challenges with a positive attitude and flexible thinking. That concludes our sharing for today. Friends, do you find the above tips helpful? Please share your experiences and insights in the comments section. If you have any questions that you would like answered, feel free to leave a message. This is Social Insights, a friendly companion focusing on social skills, habit formation, storytelling, and dating tips. See you in the next episode.